from about 20 countries. And the school admits them when they are just plus five in class one. And the education goes up to 16 years, that is up when they are in 12th class. They leave the school at the end of 12th class. School is affiliated to ICSE, Indian Council of Secondary Education, and it is also affiliated to IBO, International Baccalaureate Organization. So that when children who come from different countries, when they leave this institution after completing education here, they can get education, they can get admission in their respective countries also without much problem. Here, we you complete education to them. Not only physical and mental or intellectual education, but we impart to them moral and spiritual education also. We teach them Sahaja Yoga. The Sahaja Yoga raises their Kundalini, their innate power, and gives them touch or contact with the cosmic consciousness. And when that happens, the child knows what is good, what is wrong, what is bad. He knows, he develops that discretion. And he also develops a taste for the best, taste for the good, good, beautiful. And so when he goes back to his country, he is almost an ambassador of Sahaja Yoga to their countries. And there is a hope that these very children, when they go back to their countries, can transform the world and make it a better place to live. That is the purpose of the school. So academically also, they are almost, you see, at the top board of the school. They are affiliated to that. And physically also, we have the physical education department separately that looks caters to the physical development. And then Sai Yoga caters to their spiritual and moral development. So that no aspect is ignored. There is complete education that is needed, that is a crying need of the modern age. That is the purpose of the school and it has grown up very beautifully during the last 10 years. Now it is just on the top of a mountain, Doladar mountain. In front you have got the Doladar mountains with snow keep uh, peaked caps and at the behind, at the back of it, the thick jungle. So we are cut off from the negativities of the world and the child lives in a wonderful piece of paradise and grows up wonderfully well as a complete human being and fulfilling the purpose for which they are born.
various respectable positions during his tenure. And presently, he is the chairman of Himachal Pradesh Board of School Education. He has contributed a lot in Indian literature by publishing various books. His research papers have been published in various newspapers and magazines. Precisely, we can say that he is an academician and an administrator par excellence. Today, we are presenting different items of music, dance and drama, which depict the Indian culture in a vivid form. I hope you will like the program as we feel tremendous joy at presenting before you. Now, I would like to request Ms. Padma Sharma to come up on the dais and present the school report. Thank you. Education evolved by Her Holiness Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi. It particularly aims at balanced development of the child amidst the chaos of modern times. As modern education has become dry and hollow, schools and universities may confer high sounding degrees where the spirit is ignored, the personality remains incomplete and unbalanced. But, on the contrary, Sahaj Yoga education embraces the academic curriculum of national education boards, but also beyond this, envisages an opportunity for the child to enjoy the precious and the magic days of innocence of pure spirit. It is learning with a difference the child is nurtured with loving home care and prepared to appreciate the realities of the outside world. Thus, wisdom is born. Classroom lessons then become an integral part of the total learning process. Each le lesson learned is a joyful experience, enriching the child's awareness and ascent. This school fosters a unique relationship among the students and teachers, which establishes purity and innocence. This, the emphasis is on dignity, decency and decorum of good manners, so the students learn morality and sacredness of the body, which is the temple of the God. The child is made mindful of his individual and collective responsibilities, fellow men, public pro property, country and the world at large. India is a vast country with varied climates and rich cultural ancient heritage and the Himalayas with their evergreen flora and fauna are known for their peace, tranquility and unpolluted atmosphere. It is here that International Sage Public School is spread over an area of seven acres surrounded by snow-capped peaks of Himalayas on one side and lush green pine trees on the other, which gives it a very scenic view. It is situated away from noise and din of towns in Talanu, which is 13 kilometers away from Dharamshala and is well connected by bus service. It is a residential school and has beautiful campus of its own. In order to make students feel at home, this whole school has been divided into 14 families, each family has the children of different ages and classes. Each family is looked after by a senior student family leader with the help of a dorm mother and a teacher in charge. Again, in order to give homely atmosphere and get rid of homesickness, each family leader gets family money every Sunday in addition to pocket money. On the same day, they get their turn for cooking on rotation basis. Each building has telephone facilities so that students do not feel homesick and are constantly in touch with their parents. The school now has internet facility that has made communication and cooperation between school and parents faster and easier. It is open to staff and students also. Students are making best use of it for their studies. At present, the school has classes up to 12. The school is recognized to teach up to class 10 by Council for ICSC. The school has also got affiliated to the IBO, International Baccalaureate Organization, for classes 11th and 12th. Students from more than 20 countries seek admission in this school. A very meager amount is charged as school fee for such high class education. A compatible staff, which is highly qualified, talented and compassionate, are trained in the science of Sahaj Yoga. The teachers are a model for students to follow. The school offers following subjects. English, Mathematics, Science, Physics, Chemistry and Biology, Social Science, History, Civics and Geography, Second Language, German, Hindi and Sanskrit, Art, Woodcraft, Dance, Music that is Vocal and Instrumental, Computer Science, Business and Organization, Home Science, SUPW, Socially Useful Productive Work, CAS that is Creativity, Action and Services, Talk that is Theory of Knowledge. Here before last year, the school adopted three neighboring village schools and helped them with cash and time. The schools are Government High School in Parsetganj, Government Middle School, Mitra Saint, and Government Primary School, Nerti. 
Taking into account the interest of the children, the school has made special arrangements to teach clay craft, wood craft and Indian classical dance that is Kathak and Bharatnatyam. In classes 1 to 4, the school lays more stress on habit formation, paper craft, simple wood craft, clay craft, drawing, painting, music and dance in addition to learning subjects like English, Mathematics, Science, Social Studies and Hindi. All the students are taught Hindi being the national language of India. All the pujas are performed by the students with great sanctity. Havans are they are taken to different historical places to show them and to make them aware of rich cultural heritage of India so that they know more about Indian culture and its glory. The school has its own uniform for summer and winter separately for boys and girls. Typical Indian dresses like salwar kameez, kurta pajama are preferred in place, place of skirts and shirts. Not only the dress, even their names are given after Indian gods and goddesses such as Saraswati, Lakshmi, Hanuman, Siddhartha and Gautama. Our school is taking part enthusiastically in environment awareness movements in Himachal Pradesh. As a result, we have formed nature clubs consisting of students and staff as per Himachal government suggestions that is really helpful and is making us eco-friendly in our attitude. The morning routine starts at 6 o'clock with a soft music to wake up the students. Morning meditation is followed by breakfast and morning assembly. Regular classes follow thereafter. In between, there are two short intervals and lunch breaks. Hobbies are taken care of. After giving, went to the creative talent of the students and are of sports and students feel fresh for studies again. The school ha also has debates, quiz and other inter-house competitions in order to have a cooperative team spirit and inculcate in them the desire and aptitude to make them useful citizens and widen their horizons. Supervised classes are conducted in the evening. Study time is followed by sumptuous dinner. Video system screens appropriate films on scheduled days. A day full of activities comes to an end. Happy and positive thoughts are so soon engulfed by sound sleep. Thus, the students are not only protected from the banes of modern society, but are trained to be the pioneers of 21st century all over the world. Under the guidance of divine guidance of Her Holiness Shri Mataji, our India will again emerge as Jagat Guru Bharat. To sum up, it is not becoming, but being that guides the upbringing of the students. Thank <laughs> you. 
Say a few words about our program. Param Puji, Ma Nirmala Ji, Kashiwat Se, Aaj Is School Me. मुझे आने का सौभाग्य मिला मंच पर उपस्थित योगी महाजन जी जो स्कूल के चेयरमैन भी हैं और जैसा कि मुझे पता चला सारी गतिविधियों का संचालन किसी ना किसी रूप में कर रहे हैं स्कूल के डायरेक्टर हाल जी मेरे मित्र राजेंद्र राजन जी जो कि डिप्टी डायरेक्टर हैं पब्लिक रिलेशन डिपार्टमेंट में इस स्कूल में पढ़ाने वाले आचार्य उपस्थित बच्चे और नागरिक मैं ये मानता हूं कि किसी स्थान पर जाना अपने वश में नहीं होता कोई शक्ति रहती है जो आपको उस स्थान पर ले जाती है और शायद अपने कर्मों का कोई फल शेष रहा होता है जो आपको किसी अच्छे अनुभव के सामने ले जाता है वेन आई एंटर द पेंसिल ऑफ द स्कूल आई मैट महाजन जी द लवेबल सॉफ्ट स्पोकन पर्सन हुम आई मैट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम आई वॉज रियली इंप्रेस्ड द कामनेस विद इन इज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द कामनेस Outside, 
the more you are educated inside, the more your language and your way of speaking is aggressive and your pitch is naturally very high in normal speech also. It was the first impression which I gathered and I found the children studying here in calm, quiet, pious atmosphere. The nature has given its best to this place. And the children who have come from far and wide, it's, a, it's an experience for me to see so, such small children living in an extended family. I don't call it a school. School is some, something which naturally children dread. They don't want to go, go to school. But here, what I found was that 14 families living in such a lovable manner that children have almost forgotten their homes. The way children were enjoying, the way they were playing, the, the way they were expressing themselves on the dais, it was a wonderful experience. And I feel really honored and excited to be among the children here. All the items presented here were of very high quality. First of all, I was taken to the exhibition. Small children, they expressed themselves so freely. And it's a treat to watch how they express themselves in small figures, lines, colors, and all these things. All the craft articles, paintings, they're really of very good quality. Children here are learning real things which matter in life. Because to work with one's own hands is the crux of education. The culture program presented here, I, I can say that it was all Indian culture. Indian culture is not only Indian, but it is universal culture also. Now how is so? How we can say that Indian culture is universal culture? Because in Indian culture, you have the freedom to express yourself in any way you like. There are no restrictions, no boundaries, no barriers. For example, you are a hard-working person. You want to do great things. Then the path of karma yoga is open to you. You work, you serve, you will achieve God. You will be nearer to God. Karma yoga, a karma yogi can reach God through his karmas. Then you are an emotional person. You are not interested in karmas or in actions that much. But your heart is one with God. You want to unite God, unite with God through your emotions. Then bhakti yoga, that is another path. You surrender to God. Don't think that you are doing anything. Through bhakti yoga, again you can reach God. Suppose you don't believe in this also, neither in karma nor in bhakti. You are a man of intellect. 
you believe in arguments, you believe in intellectual sharpness, you want to achieve God through learning, then you go on working in that field. And Jnana Yoga is the path through which you can reach God. So these are the three basic instincts in man. Either we try to know things through our intellect, or we want to know things with our intuition or heart, or we want to know things through our actions. So any religion, any culture that caters to all these three needs is a universal culture. And what I feel is, Indian culture has all these three ingredients and all these three parts are open. They are not graded if one is superior or inferior. You can achieve God to any of these parts. So that's why whatever was presented here, right from Ganesha Stuti, Shiva Stuti, then Durga Puja, Giri Nandini, all these things. The whole family of Shiva was presented through different dances, different songs. So what I felt while sitting over there, that I am for the first time witnessing, enjoying, rather taking part in such a feast of very high quality that I have never had an occasion to enjoy before. That's why, that's why I said it is not in your control to come to a place. Destiny guides you to that place. So it was just a matter of chance that director Shri Kauji, he, he rang me up, he said, that you can spare some time. And I was more than willing to come here and see what the children are learning here, what the teachers are doing here. And it's a wonderful experience. It is an experiment. And it is bound to succeed because the children, whatever they are doing here, they will become our ambassadors. They will become ambassadors of Indian culture. One thing more I would like to say on this occasion. The greatest preacher, ambassador of Indian culture that India has produced, Swami Vivekananda, he was a person who interpreted Indian culture to the West. He may not have given anything new, but one thing is very sure, very clear, that he had the genius to talk to the West in the language of the West. That is, he interpreted Indian culture, Indian mythology, Indian philosophy, in a scientific manner to the West, and West accepted it. In the West, he told them, Indian culture is supreme because it is not materialistic. <coughs> Materialism is not the basic thing in our culture. And I remember our story, the great warrior Seleucus, who was next to Alexander the Great, he invaded India after Alexander. He had captured so many places. At one place, he was told that there is a saint living here. His name is Dandayan. And that saint has not come to pay his respects to you. He sent some soldiers, all right, bring that old man here. How come that he has not come here? He should be here. 
I am the victor. I am the conqueror of the world. Naturally, the soldiers went there. They requested, they asked him. But the old sage said, Please don't disturb me. I am in meditation. The soldiers dare not touch him. Such was the aura. The great person, the great souls, they have their own aura of strength or light. Nobody dared to come near them. They just ran away, went to Sri Lucas. They said, Sir, it's not possible to bring him here. You please go and see for yourself. Sri Lucas went to that old man's hut. It was a thatched hut, torn and worn out. It was in the morning. The sun was rising. So Lucas just stood at the gate and he said, Old man, you can see the victor of the world standing at your gate. Ask for anything that you want. I will give you anything that you want. Dandayan, who was meditating, opened his eyes. He said, get away. Keep aside. Let the sunshine come. You can't give me the sunshine. I don't want anything from you. So Indian philosophy teaches us that nothing material is important. Whatever is important is within you. So you try to find out contentment, satisfaction from within, not from outside. Outside things are not that important. That is the message. I know children have been sitting here for the last more than two hours, and it will be cruel to them to go on talking like that. In the end, I'll just narrate a small story for the children so that they understand what they are enjoying here is something unique. Actually, in this world, the most difficult thing <coughs> is to remain sahaj. Sahaj means straight. Sahaj means something very simple, very straight, very pure, very pious. And to draw a straight line is the most difficult thing in the world. So to become Sahaj is very difficult because this mind, this man is very crooked. It takes you so, uh, to so many places in a second, in a split second. So it's very difficult. In order to live peacefully, dear children, you must live like the king whose story I am going to narrate. Now there was a king. And mind you, he was a great king, very just, very honest, very much loved by the public. Now whenever he went to the court, before going to the court, he used to go in one of his chambers. He had a small chamber specially built near the court. Now what was there in the chamber, nobody knew. Actually, in that chamber, he had installed mirrors all around, on, on the roof as well as on the four walls. Now the mirrors were there. Whenever he went inside, he laughed heartily, came out, and administered justice, and people were very happy. People could listen only the voice of it. Now, one day the door remained open. The Chokidar forgot to lock that room. Unfortunately, a dog came there. The dog went inside. In the morning, when the Chokidar came, he opened, opened the door and saw the dog lying there dead. The dog died 
but there was no sign of beating there. Nobody had killed the dog. The courtiers, they went to the king. They said, sir, you go to this room, you come out, and you look very hale and hearty, as if you have got more strength, but this poor dog has died. Why? What is the reason? Then the king took one of the courtiers, his minister, in that room. He said, look here, these are the mirrors. I see my reflection all around me, and I find that all the world is like me. <coughs> all these people living in this world, they are just like me. And I enjoy to be with them. And since I consider them like myself, therefore I love them too much. But this poor dog, when, he, him, he had, when the dog had entered, he might have thought that he had been surrounded by another dog. And the dog started barking. Now the poor dog barked and barked for hours together and died because it considered everybody else as enemy. So in this world, if you consider everyone your friend, your own image, then there is no question of any conflict. You will be happy, you will get, get strength while meeting people. But if you consider everybody as your enemy, like the dog, then you know what awaits you. It's very clear. <coughs> Dear children, it has been a really a rewarding evening for me. I have learned so much. I have enjoyed so much. And I thank you all for inviting me, especially the management of the school. I wish all progress of this institution. Thank you very much. I feel that my interaction with you will be complete only when I join one of your sessions of Sahaj Yoga sometime. And second, I would, I would like to, I would like to, where cooperation is possible from my side for, 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 the, for the support of your cause, I would always be there. You mentioned, a few months back, you mentioned about one road. Uh, Honorable Transport Minister also spoke about that. Yes, there was some problem because strictly it was not uh, as per uh, government rules and norms. But now we have taken a sort of a positive interpretation of the rules because you are doing such a good work. So this, uh, so your scheme of uh, road will be sanctioned. A little uh, gift from my side for your excellent performance and efforts put by you. So to help you in developing your cultural activities further, I would, from the side of district administration, I will, I would contribute a small amount of rupees five thousand. So uh, thank you very much, and I would love to be called again to get associated with you and next time uh, if possible I would like to join you one of your sessions. Thank you. Pleasure trip to Himachal Pradesh is not so. My sole aim of leaving my job in Pune and coming to Himachal Pradesh was visiting this school and seeing you all here. We wanted to derive some inspiration from this institution and to work out how this kind of an institution can be replicated elsewhere in India. And I'm really excited. I went through 
I landed up here in the morning, went around the school, saw the infrastructure. It's just excellent. I must tell you all that you are at the right place at the right time. No pollution, no impurity, white snow-clad mountains around, high ranges of Himalayas. Only thing you should learn from here is the purity of heart as this snow-clad snow mountains stand for. And look at these high ranges to achieve whatever you want to achieve in your life. I wish you all a very great success and happiness in your life. Thank you very much. I'm studying in class 12. I'm from Australia. And I've been here for five years. This is my sixth year. And I've had very good experiences at the school. I really enjoy this place. And I would like to spend a lot of more of my time in the school. This is a very beautiful area. This is Kalnu. As Shimaji calls this the first hour of the world. And the meditation here in the morning is just like meditating in the first hour of the world. It's just as all of us here, like brothers and sisters, living in the first hour of the world. I really enjoy being here. And I'd like to stay here for many more years. You know, this is my last year as I'm studying in year 12. Um, um, our, dorms, our school system is very unique as this is a special system of education which is developed by Shimaji, a holy mother, and to educate us in the right direction so we may be able to lead the world and help all the people in order to recognize the truth about Sahaja Yoga. So um, we have we learn Sahaja Yoga here as well as we learn all our academic subjects like history, geography, physics, maths, computers, information technology and our school is affiliated to ICSC examination board till year 10 and uh, international baccalaureate for 11th and 12th which is a Swiss board from coming and <laughs> Um, uh, hi, my name is Rosie. I, I'm in class 9 and I've been here. This is my 8th year this year. I came when I was quite young in class 2 and I've had a very nice time all these years. I just think it's so beautiful. You look around and there's so many trees and flowers and it's really nice. Hi, my name is Teresa and I'm in class 9. I've been here since I was in class 1 and I come from Australia. I, I really like this place because there's so much nature and everything and you don't have to put up with the city life and the rush and everything and take your own time to do everything. I just really like the vibrations here as well. Good evening. This is Kalpana Schwartz presenting the 7 o'clock news. Tonight's headlines in brief. Farmers are surprised by an oversized cucumber epidemic in West Wales as monstrous vegetables spring up overnight. Scientists in Bombay have discovered the cooling and beneficial property of the moon, while the rest of the world, spiritual and scientific alike, wonder why they hadn't taken the time to notice before. And tonight, a special look at how one small school in the Himalayas is regulating the weather for the rest of the world. <coughs> the surprise for more than a hundred farmers when they discovered that overnight their cucumber crop had grown to a full 20 feet long echoed throughout the agricultural industry today. This popular green vegetable, normally only a matter of inches in length, has grown to the waist of the farmers and spread across the entire span of their fields. Some farmers have reported that the cucumbers have come alive or been possessed and are fighting each other for space. This has not, however, been verified as yet. Some suspect it is a kind of trick, whilst others call it, I quote, God's blessings on us poor farmers. Our on-the-spot reporters have transmitted the following news flash to us. Here, in the country of Wales, we are witnessing a most magnificent, yet scary occurrence. 
the vegetable that has sent the agricultural world, and indeed everyone else into shock, has sprung up unexplainably last night. And have you seen any of these amazing objects yet? Yes, they're quite hard to miss actually. One should be coming along any minute now. And what do the farmers say? How are they coping with this oversized crop? Oh well, the general feeling is that they're in a right pickle. Some of the farmers have been persuading their wives to test and cook the newly sized crop. And can you tell us in the studio the results of these tests? Well, no deaths as yet. Here we have one of the farmers involved. Yeah. What do you think of these freakish vegetables? Tastes like old sauce to Miami wife. Now where's the space they're taking up? Well, what about this amazing phenomena? Surely you are interested by the freakiness of this. Don't know nothing about no phenomena. But can tell you this much. Nature has a strange way of telling us things. Yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Messer Tapanomi Tamiya. Over there, oh. to me wife, to me wife, over there. Excuse me. Well, that was the BBC News reporting, West Wales, Europe. Between the moon's rays and balance, the ambitious planning types has finally been taken note of by American scientists. On hearing the news, the Chinese Ministry for the Furtherance of Human Understanding sent a telegram to the science board claiming to have made the discovery, stating, and have you noticed the stars yet? Our reporters were on the scene. We are much humbled by the discovery of a fact apparently previously understood by everyone except us. It seems that if we hadn't been such busy people before, we would surely have noticed the rest of the world already since the now. Investigations in America's leading laboratories Amazingly, these investigations happen to be on the scientists themselves. Thanks. Yes, we are currently testing the rather hermit-like existence of our most prominent scientists. We know already that cities cut people off from nature drastically, yet we have not taken note of the further damage done to the people who are busy for too many hours inside buildings and very rarely see the sun. Looking at the moon has done them good, but half expecting them to start howling any minute. And finally, one small school in the Himalayas is reported to have been sending out cool vibrations to the rest of the world, not only cooling people's livers down, but the weather also. We noticed that the children were emitting a high level of gamma rays. They also have very high torsion fields. Local meteorologists had noticed that the school had a lower temperature than the rest of the region, yet higher pressure in the atmosphere, causing higher levels of sunshine. These discoveries were made by this, by that eminent Russian scientist, studying the torsion fields of people in meditation. However, this event has been more of a sensational nature. One child has said to have frozen a whole field of sheep while carrying out the practice of shoe beating in a local field. Local ice cream factories have expressed an interest in this and are currently negotiating with the school. One of the teachers from the school has allowed us this comment. Well, I believe the children and indeed anyone who meditates has a great deal of untapped power. Making trees and flowers grow, helping other people find balance, all manner of things. And you see, it spreads out. You don't have to do anything. It just spreads out. This may explain, say some local tour guides, why tourists in this region have always returned home so refreshed, and why the world's weather depends on the moods of the children in this school. The head of the school says, uh, why not? Anyone can do it. As a matter of fact, it's a matter of tuning in. And that's all for tonight's news. And for me, Kalpana Schwartz of the BBC News Desk. Good night.
My dear Sri H. N. Kolji, while conveying my thanks for your letter, I am very much impressed and pleased to see the activities put forth in your brochure. It is really very commendable that such type of education, especially education on spiritual values, is being imparted in your institution. Due to Parliament session, I will not be able to visit your school till 31st December 2000. However, I will definitely make it a point to meet all of you and see the activities of the institution in the near future. With all good wishes, yours sincerely.